We've spent most of our life helping women become successful, and it starts with raising daughters how to, how to make it in life. And we've written a new book, Finding Grit, Helping Your Daughters Be Successful in uh, Sports and in Academics. And uh, the core of that really, the first thing that we want to talk about is uh, developing responsibility. How you create that in a family, how you create respect and love. And I was wondering, Mac, what your impression of, of uh, how we would do that in a family? Well, I think it's very interesting, like, talking about women, because so many times women are kind of not treated equally. And because we had daughters, we always thought it was important that they should have the same successes and values that they can be in the world. Yeah. And one of the things that we looked at were responsibility. Uh, is the idea that uh, as children become responsible, they learn to respect others, they re learn to respect their talents, they re learn to respect their feelings, their thoughts, you know, how they uh, cooperate and, and live in a family. And it's not such an easy thing to teach. I mean, what, do you, what are your thoughts? I think that's right, and I think we have to set a model, like as parents, you have to set a model for your children. And so we always had the goal that they would become responsible, self-sufficient adults. And so our job was to teach them how to survive. So many times we would set responsibilities up so that they would be able to take care of themselves, that they would be able to succeed. Right. Yeah, and, and the big belief we had with this is that parents need to model what they want from their children. That if you're going to get a child that's going to be successful in life, that they need to see consistency from parents, that they need to show what, they, what their values are. What are the values of our family? What do we believe in? What's important to us? And that you stick with those values consistently. You can't do things every other time or once in a while that um, you, know, you do these things and you do them every day. One of the things, for example, we could talk about is how we believe that our kids uh, would have uh, clean rooms and organized space. That right. was one of our values, that we believe chaos creates problems. Right. Right. And so, so we were like very organized, so we would set up the responsibility that they also were organized, but with the, ex the expectation that they would keep it just as neat and as organized as we would keep the house. So there were situations where, as typically kids believe that their room belongs to them and that it's a private space and they close the door and they take food in or they, they make, leave it a mess. And a lot of parents believe that that's okay. But our philosophy was that it's part of the house, it's part of the family. And we would like have this kind of trick with them. Like uh, usually I left for work in, early in the morning at about seven and they were just starting to get up. And if I found uh, that the house was not organized, their rooms weren't organized, then I would get a big black plastic bag and I would take it around and I would pick up everything that wasn't put away. I would put it in the bag and I would leave it in my trunk and I would go to work. Now that could have been books, it could have been clothes, it could have been shoes, whatever was not put in its place disappeared until a point that I decided they were responsible enough to have it back. And so that usually caused a little bit of uh, anger and frustration in the beginning, but they soon learned that when I went to get the plastic bag that they better hustle and they better get their things picked up and things had better be in order, particularly when I left in the morning. Yeah, and I think that disagrees with a lot of parents of how they see their philosophy now. They, they um, accept chaos. They see that kids can be disorganized and... Like, I get upset when kids uh, get toys, for example, and I see this over and over again when we talk with families, that kids get objects or toys and they don't show responsibility because they don't take care of things that they get. Right. They end up breaking them. They're, there's no uh, consequence for them treating things badly. And so if you treat things badly, one of our philosophies is you're going to start treating people badly also. Right that there isn't that parents, um, in our view, if you're going to have kids that are going to learn to be successful, they have to re have respect for themselves. They have to re have to have respect for the property around them. They have to have respect for uh, their siblings and others and, and people in the community. And all of this comes from that core value that we're talking about, which is this, this sense of responsibility. And a lot of times it starts with them being responsible to you as a parent. 
that the best way to teach this, especially when they're very young, is that they need to, children, you have to teach children how to respect their parents. And then through that, they'll learn to respect themselves. A lot of parents think it goes the other way around. They look at, they see their children as uh, special. And they keep telling them how exceptional where they are. What we call, often call snowflake kids, that every child is a snowflake and every child is special. But in our view, we think humility is a much better value than teaching your child and telling your child that they're exceptional all the time. Right. And, and so, um, if you look, you know, when you look at adults, what do you see as a value that's important? And I think humility is one of those values. I agree with you because there's certain situations with our kids that it was a, like a we more than an I, in that it was about a team. It was about a team approach. It was a part about the team. It was a part about the family as a whole. It, was, it wasn't I just did something. It's we right. did something. And we were successful because we did it as a team. So some of the responsibility is not just for yourself, but responsibility for those that are around you, that you're involved with, or, right. or it, that you're in relationships with. And so as far as a family responsibility is, we're all part of a family. We each have responsibilities for being members of that family, whether it's cleaning your room, whether it's helping prepare meals, whether it's doing chores around the house, we all have that responsibility. And that's true. And one of the things that we thought was critically important that kids teach, talk to each other in respectful and caring ways. We get so upset when we see many children nowadays treating each other, their siblings, in disrespectful ways and talking to them in ways that's just unhealthy and unproductive. And the way you develop relationships between siblings, because they're going to show relationships in the rest of the world is you talk to each other in nice ways, in caring ways. You can disagree and you can conflict, but screaming, yelling, fighting, all of those things, we just, we just didn't accept them. There are other ways to communicate, and it's important to, for parents to intervene in, in these things early. And as far as chores, yeah, we believe that uh, the family existed around how you make a contribution to each other. This is our house, our place, our family. And so, you teach that sense of responsibility to everyone. They all become a part of that and then they learn to contribute to society and that's a big step in being successful.